News Channel 15 presents The Film Reel, the talk show where we discuss everything going on in the world of movies and television. With hosts Bryce West and John Freeland, this is The Film Reel. Hello and welcome back into The Film Reel, the talk show where we discuss everything going on in the world of movies and television. I'm your host, Bryce West, here with John Freeland. It is our first episode of 2021, the epic second part to this third season of The Film Reel. Are you excited, John? I'm very excited, especially after I missed the Christmas special. Oh, yeah. That, that was such a shame, but, but it, it was great to have uh, Kane back there for those two episodes. But with that being said, this is our final stretch of Film Reel episodes here on News Channel 15. So we're in the end game now, John. So is, <laughs> You're in the end game. Yeah. So, <laughs> but, uh, so, yeah, I'm excited to get right into this. Uh, with that being said, we have got a brand new segment here on the show with uh, the box office starting to kind of uh, – come back here recently, uh, especially with, with Christmas, uh, uh, Christmas movies able to actually be making some money now. We have, we have actually introduced a new segment in here into the show called the Box Office Report. And with that being said, we have also introduced five new members to the Film Reel crew, that being Branton Beard, Mallory Burton, Eli Grimes, Drew Pounton, and Kyler Gammon. So welcome them to the crew. Ian Klingler will be filling in for Eli Grimes on today's segment, but with that being said, let's take a look at the box office report. Coming in at number five in the box office is Fatal, starring Hilary Swank and Michael Ely. After a one-night stand, a successful married man finds himself entangled in a cunning police detective's latest investigation. The film grossed just over $656,000, dropping 6% from the previous weekend. For the film reel, I'm Britton Beard. Coming in at number four in the box office is Monster Hunter, starring Mila Jovovich. When Lieutenant Artemis and her loyal soldiers are transported to a new world, they engage in a desperate battle for survival against enormous enemies with incredible powers, based on the video game by Capcom. The film brought in $1.1 million, dropped 12.5% from the last weekend. For the film rail, I'm Mallory Burton. Coming in at number three is News of the World, starring Tom Hanks. A Civil War veteran agrees to deliver a girl taken by the Kiowa people years ago to her aunt and uncle against her will. They travel hundreds of miles and face grave dangers as they search for a place that either can call home. The film brought in $1.2 million, dropping 26.9% from last weekend. For the film reel, I'm Kyler Gaiman. Coming in at number two is The Croods, A New Age, starring Nicolas Cage, Emma Stone, and Ryan Reynolds. The prehistoric family The Croods are challenged by a rival family, The Bettermans, who claim to be better and more evolved. The film brought in $1.8 million, dropping 18.6% from last week. For the film reel, I'm Ian Klingler. Coming in at number one in the box office is Wonder Woman 1984, starring Gal Gadot and Chris Pine. Diana must contend with a work colleague and businessman whose desire for extreme wealth sends the world down a path to destruction after an ancient artifact that grants wishes goes missing. The film grows $3 million, dropping 45.5% from last weekend. For the film reel, I'm Drew Pountain. Huge thanks to those five for helping out with this brand new segment of the film reel. That being said, uh, let's discuss. Number one, Wonder Woman 1984. Definitely not uh, too big of a shock there. Yeah. I, I think uh, we, uh, I think it was me and Kane during the holiday special we discussed this to where we think that Wonder Woman 1984 will probably be a, uh, another tenant scenario where we're probably going to see Wonder Woman 1984 at number one for quite a while. Uh, I, I, I don't know of anything opening up uh, that will uh, top it anytime soon. That being said, there is always something that, that creeps up. You know, the war with Grandpa coming in to take down Tenet kind of surprised the heck out of us, you know, especially a movie called The, the, the War oh, with Grandpa. Grandpa. Uh, you know, that was starring Robert De Niro. So, yeah, just, just a weird uh, uh, movie overall. The Croods was at number two. I mean, it's a kid's movie. It was Christmas time, so that makes sense. Uh, News of the World, we talked about that. I, I don't know if you were on the show at the time yet, but we, we had uh, uh, talked about that movie uh, previously. We showed the trailer yeah. uh, for that whenever that came out. And then number four, Monster Hunter. Uh, it's one of those video game adaptations. Those don't usually have a great track record. So uh, number four is not bad. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, th th anything that makes it in the top five in the COVID-19 pandemic is, is, is pretty decent. Uh, so, and I'm sure they probably had a direct-to-video release as well. 
Yeah. Uh, so, so hopefully that will kind of help help that out there uh, as well. And then uh, fate, fatal or fatal, fatal. I, I I don't know how to pronounce. It. Because it's spelled like uh, fatal with like an e at the end, so I don't know. But but yeah, that one's starring like Hilary Swank. Uh, so it seems to be kind of like a dramatic sort of romance kind of thing. And of course, th those usually do well as well. So it makes sense to see why that one made it into the top five. So moving on, uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe is back, everybody. WandaVision premieres today on Disney Plus, and uh, this is the first. Uh, mainline Marvel Cinematic Universe material that we are seeing since Spider-Man Far From Home back in Ju uh, June or July of last year. So there has been quite the big Marvel drought. And now Wanda WandaVision is coming back to uh, uh, bring the Marvel Cin Cinematic Universe back with Phase 4. This series looks absolutely bonkers. It seems like uh, Wanda has kind of made this this world for herself where the vision is still alive and they're living their lives throughout like different eras of sitcoms is definitely a very interesting premise for a show. Uh, I, I remember whenever we first discussed this trailer on the show and we had really no idea what to expect of this show or what to think. And the show is here, and we still have absolutely no idea. Uh, I've got I've got friends slash colleagues who have seen the show already, and they are absolutely loving it. Uh, they and they've seen I, I I've got colleagues who have seen the first three episodes of the show, and they still have no idea what's going on either. So I am excited to go on this absolutely bonkers, crazy adventure, whatever this show is. Uh, I I love just the pure mis mystery uh mystery behind it you know we have no idea what we're expecting from this you know usually a marvel movie you know what you're gonna you're, yeah. you know what you're in for you know who the villain is and yeah like what the but story wandavision is. i've got absolutely no idea and i cannot be loving it anymore john what are your thoughts on wandavision i'm out? i'm very excited i i still am confused about like the sitcom area. i'm so like i'm guessing there's gonna be a lot of references are, yeah. In I, yeah well i mean she uh the Wanda is played by Elizabeth Olsen, who is the sister of uh, Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen, the Olsen twins, from you know the likes of Full House, yeah. and so so her family does have a kind of a history with sitcoms. Man, if they don't do an episode on Full House, I man, think they're imagine the missed it opportunity. A lot. Right? Yeah, I, I I I hope they do something <laughs> with Full House because they've got to, right? I mean, her sisters are the Olsen twins, so. I, I feel like you've got to have a full yeah. house episode, right? So so that that I, I'm looking forward to that if they do that. So I mean, obviously, up until this point, really the only big huge show that Disney Plus has done so far is The Mandalorian. So how do you think that that Wandavision is going to compete compete with Mandalorian? Do you think the Wandavision will uh, be able to to do more numbers than Mandalorian, or do you think that Mandalorian will still stay on top as Disney Plus's most popular show? Well, through the past years, Star Wars and Marvel have like gone back and forth with who's number one in like box office results. So I feel like it's going to be like that, where Mandalorian and WandaVision, sure. but maybe not WandaVision because not that many people are as big as fans. But if there's like I don't know, like, man. Maybe with Loki, that one would probably also get bigger. I, I, yeah, I, I kind of see what you're saying there. One, one, uh, Scarlet Witch and Vision aren't as popular as somebody like Although the Mandalorian like was also or, very small in yeah. the Star Wars. Well, yeah, so. but nobody knew who the Mandalorian was before, right? So, I mean, I don't know. I, I think it might be equal, if not more. Because, I mean, whenever the Mandalorian came out, we were still getting consistent Star Wars stuff. Whereas WandaVision is coming out, and we haven't had Any Marvel, Marvel since Spider-Man. Right, like for, we haven't had Marvel for around a year and a half. I haven't even realized it's been that long. So yeah, it's it's been a long time since since we've had a main Marvel Cinematic Universe project. So people are craving Marvel right now, and this is the answer. WandaVision is coming out tonight or today. It's already out, and will and then to follow only a week after. Uh, a week or two after WandaVision ends, then they move into Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and then whenever that ends, they move into Loki, and then whenever that ends, they move into What If, and then I, I believe after that ends, they move into Ms. Marvel. So Marvel oh has made a continuous cycle of Marvel content that is, I, I assume, they're wanting to go year-round 
every week they're going to have something new Marvel related for fans to watch, which is just absolutely bonkers. I mean, they've had a lot of time though yeah. to like create things. I mean, I'm them. I'm all for it. It's just this is crazy. Yeah, I'm like, very excited for it. This is so much stuff coming out. Like like, and then at the at Disney's investors meeting, which you unfortunately weren't here weren't here, here to talk about, but they announced like 25. <laughs> Marvel projects that they're working on, and then plus all of the Star Wars projects that, that Disney, Disney is working on as well. So, I mean, Disney Plus has got the, uh, an intense slate coming up here soon. So if you are not a Disney Plus subscriber already and you're a fan of Marvel, uh, Star Wars, even, even the, all the Disney properties, because I know they got a lot of stuff going on with just playing Disney and Pixar and all them, I mean, definitely, definitely get subscribed to Disney Plus because yeah. they've got some amazing stuff coming out here soon. With that being said, we're going to take a quick break. And after this, Chris Evans is coming back as Captain America or maybe not. We'll talk about that after this. Welcome back into the film reel. We've got an interesting uh, uh, du uh, duology of stories here to talk about today. Let's start off with uh, Chris Evans. So Deadline reported that Chris Evans will be returning as Captain America as, in some sort of project in the MCU. We don't know if that's the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, the Captain America spinoff coming to Disney Plus here in a, in, a, in I don't know, like, like a month or so. And then uh, it, it could have maybe been like a prequel. He could have shown up in maybe Black Widow, although they've already filmed that, so that was probably unlikely. So it was definitely a weird story because I, I, I definitely was not on board because I really felt like that they kind of wrapped up Cap's story in Avengers Endgame. And then Chris Evans, who plays Captain America, uh, uh, posted on Twitter, this is the first I'm hearing of this, and so it's kind of gotten fans going like, so wait a minute. Deadline is a pretty highly respected uh, news source. Uh, they, they rarely get anything wrong. So it's kind of weird to see Chris Evans come out and say that he has never even heard that he's supposed to be coming back to the MCU. So th there, there's, a, there's a couple options here. Deadline got the story wrong. The, the, whoever, whoever their sources were gave them inaccurate information and the, and the story is just incorrect. Or Marvel and, and even some of DC in the past has had a history of straight up lying <laughs> about this kind of stuff before yeah. to avoid spoilers or, or whatever. Uh, most recently, uh, Tatiana Masley, uh, or Maisley, I think uh, is how you pronounce her last name, uh, was reported to play She-Hulk. And then she posted on Twitter that she is, and well, and, and then Mark Ruffalo, who plays the Hulk, congratulated her on Twitter. So she had, he had to have met her at some point for them to know each other, for him to congratulate her or whatever. And then, and then she posts on Twitter or Instagram or, or on social media that she is not playing She-Hulk. And then everybody's like, um, what? What do you mean you're not playing She-Hulk? And, and, and then it's like, like that was really weird. This is like, uh, okay. Uh, and then uh, the Disney investor meeting happens where they announce all of their new upcoming projects. And then sure enough, they officially announce that Tatiana Maisley is playing She-Hulk. So they, they have had a, they, they, they have, there has definitely been a history of lying in the MCU before. Not necessarily malice lying. Like they want to keep secrets so, yeah. so people can be surprised. But, but, uh, the actors have known to lie in the past about their involvement in projects. So even though Chris Evans has come out and said that he has not heard, he has not uh, heard of talks of him to come back, that doesn't necessarily mean that that's true. So John, what are your thoughts on this odd story here? Uh, I feel it's probably like the exact same thing where he's just trying. They're trying to hide it for like, and I doubt he's gonna have like a big role. It's probably gonna be a I smaller thing because I, I also agree he should like yeah. With these moments, I, I, let, let me be clear. I love him as a character, Same. but they've wrapped up his story. Yeah, I, I think me, it's so. time for him to like retire and yeah. a new era of like Absolutely. heroes and everything. Yeah. But um, I feel like he's going like him and Tony Stark both are gonna like show up for like small parts in other movies, just as like maybe uh, like if it's a flashback, then okay. But I don't yeah. want them to do this whole thing to where they make like they like like let's say they make Captain America. Uh, not old again. They they make him young again, so he can come back. Yeah, uh, I, I don't. And want join them to the do Avengers, that or they bring Tony Stark back to life. That's ridiculous. Like if they want to do like a prequel, 
to where like they like maybe do a uh, like a nomad story like wh like where whenever he wasn't Captain America anymore uh, in between Civil War and Infinity War, uh, I think that would be cool. Um, but just don't bring him into the future area. Right. I I I. I Maybe if it's like a cameo of the of old man Captain America, that'd be fine. That's also what I'm thinking. They might do that as like. But I mean, like cameo. Like yeah. I don't want a recurring role. Like un unless it actually furthers his story and it makes sense. And it wraps him up even more. Yes. So I I mean, if it's to kind of help uh, uh, Sam Wilson transition into the role of Captain America, then I think sure, yeah, that would be fine. And, and it's just a small role like that, maybe at the end of Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Yeah. But anything other than that, I don't want to see uh, any more uh, Chris Evans as Captain America. I think he's done. I mean, they, they told the story that they wanted to tell with him, and I don't think there's, there's any reason for them to push it even further. I think, I think they need to stop uh, because cause they left on a really good note. They, they wrapped up Captain America's story really did, yeah, well very, very in well. Endgame. So... Yeah, I, I really don't want them to, to risk uh, messing it up like that. So hopefully, hopefully that is just a small role there. And in other almost equally odd news, so Netflix announced that they're making a Sonic the Hedgehog show on uh, one of their official Twitter accounts, NX. And then almost Im immediately after, they deleted the tweet. And since then, we have had... No information, no update on the status of this Sonic the Hedgehog Netflix series. So, is it still happening? Did it get canceled? Is it delayed? It was like, what happened here? Like, like was it like maybe like an accidental scheduled tweet that was scheduled at the that's wrong time? That's what I'm time? guessing happened. Like, it's weird. Yeah. So that's, I speculated that in in, in one of my articles. Uh, that I wrote, like, like I'm assuming that it's some sort of scheduling issue, maybe with, like, they, they scheduled it, and then maybe it was supposed to come out, like, a couple months from now, instead of, like, in, back in December is whenever this happened, so maybe, maybe they just clicked the wrong day, uh, month or something, like, I don't know, it's just so weird, but then, but then it comes out on, on this official Netflix account, and then they delete it, and then nothing has been said. No, there, there's, no, there's been nothing saying that it was false. There's been nothing saying that it was true. I mean, I feel like at some point, you, you accidentally released it. Say something. Like, like yeah. this is on you. Like, this, it's, it's, not like, it's not like somebody, like, like the website I work for, the Illuminati. It's not like we leaked it, or it's not like Deadline leaked it, or, the, or, or I don't know, uh, comicbook.com leaked it, you know, it... It was an official yeah. <laughs> Netflix account that leaked this. So you would think at that point there would be some sort of statement regarding what happened there, like if it's an actual real thing or not. You know, because I understand, like, if it's something, some, somebody like if, if the website I worked for leaked it, obviously, no, they're not going to comment on it. Because, because I mean, it's just some site who, who leaked the story. They don't want to report on it until until an official announcement but then you know they kind of did do the official announcement but then they retracted it so i don't know what are your what are your thoughts on this what i'm thinking is usually most uh twitter accounts are run by several people who mm -hmm. have to do yes. different articles and one person probably was doing several and did the sonic one and without realizing the date probably just posted it and then realized and instantly deleted it yeah and that's that, why he's just I've like got to assume, pushing but it under yeah, so I, nobody I'm still comments. just completely baffled as to why there's been no comment on this at all. Because at this point, it's out. Yes. So, so people saw it. It was on an official account. So I, I feel like I think you, it's a at dumb, that point, you just announce it, right? Yeah, I feel I like mean, it has to like come out now. So, like and, and, and if they already had a tweet ready to go, I mean, that, I, I assume that means that the deal's done. So it can't be something like that. Such a bizarre situation. I, 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 it's just I don't I, like like Chris Evans. Like you kind of like know what to think there, but this one is just like confusing. Yeah, it's just so confusing that I I don't really know how to wrap my head around like what exactly happened there. Definitely, definitely bizarre to say the least. Well, we've got more to come. Uh, we've got a trailer for Tom Holland in Cherry. Very exciting stuff. Right after this. 
Welcome back into the film reel. We're getting ready to take a look at the trailer for Cherry. Just real quick before we start, we're going to be trying to look something a little different. This is just us testing the waters. This may be temporary. We, we might keep this going, but we're actually going to be giving our live reactions to the trailer. We haven't seen it yet, so we're actually going to be giving our live reactions to the trailer as the trailer is going. So this is this is something new that we're trying. So so uh, depending on what we think or or uh, what the people at home think, we're we're going to try this out, and and depending on how it goes, we may keep it, we may not. So we're going to go ahead and try that. But let's take a look at Cherry right now. I'm 23 years old, and sometimes I wonder if life was wasted on me. I take all the beautiful things to heart. Tom Holland has been getting into more darker roles. Until I about That's die true. from it. If I the first thing. Hey, I'm really happy you're here. Why is that? Because I like you. Oh, oh, gosh, that's crazy. You're it for me. I feel the same way. I joined the army. Why would you do that? Sometimes I feel like I've already seen everything that's gonna happen. <laughs> and it's a nightmare. My one true accomplishment was not dying. I have this noise in my head. It'll stop. One day it'll go quiet. I don't imagine that anyone goes in for a robbery if they're not in some kind of desperation. I've been at this a while now, and it's no secret what my face looks like. Tom Holland's acting ground. range is one just One thing about robbing banks amazing. is you're mostly robbing women, so the last thing you want to be is rude. Ma'am, it's nothing personal. Lighthearted. Well, there, there is that. Uh, John, uh, what are your thoughts here on uh, the trailer for Cherry? It's definitely a darker movie and um, a good storyline, though. I'm very like intrigued on what they plan yeah. on doing. Was um, that the full trailer? That seems like it stopped yeah, it suddenly. Like it kind of early. Okay, well, we lost some of we well, I guess we lost some of the trailer there. Uh, I don't know what happened, uh, but uh, okay, well, uh, we saw some of the trailer uh, to Cherry. Uh, uh, so uh, don't know what happened there. It looks like we we got some technical difficulties with that. But uh, regardless, um, definitely weird. Uh, you know, uh, it's I, I'm definitely very very intrigued. It's an Apple TV Plus original. I don't think. Barely anybody <laughs> has Apple TV Plus, so I don't know. I don't know who else is going to be be able to watch this, but but uh, to definitely. To be honest, I didn't know there was a thing called Apple TV Plus. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a streaming service called Apple TV Plus. Everybody and Cherry is going to be on it, but yeah, I mean, the, it's directed by the Russo brothers. Yeah. So I've, I've definitely got confidence in them, and then Tom Holland seems to be doing an absolutely superb job in the role. I mean, I mean, he has proven that that he is he has been able to do. Uh, darker roles like uh, he has a, such a big like, range. Yeah, of well, films. he did that Netflix movie. I, the, the, it was something like The Devil Inside or something, uh, and and so like that was so dark. Like I watched that and, and yeah, it, it, yeah, it was it was it was super depressing. But um, yeah, I'm excited to see what the, what what he can bring to the table here in Cherry, and and I'm also excited to see. Uh, somebody like Ciara, Ciara Bravo. Did, did you watch Big Time Rush as a kid, the Nickelodeon I did not. show? I I did, and and it's interesting because obviously, like, uh, how long how long ago was that? Like maybe like ten years ago. She was like a young child, you know. Yeah. So it's interesting to see her in a in a role like in present day. You know, I, I'm 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 intrigued to see what what she's gonna be able to do. Uh, especially uh, alongside a, a huge star like Tom Holland. I mean, I mean that's that's really cool because because I, I I haven't really seen her do anything uh, past Big Time Rush. I'm sure she has, but but this is the first time since Big Time Rush on Nickelodeon that I've seen her in anything. So it's definitely very intriguing 
to see her in a role alongside Tom Holland. I feel and like so, though uh, it being exclusive to Apple TV Plus yeah. uh, is going to limit the amount of people who actually see it. I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it's going to be the same thing with any streaming service, but I mean, yeah, I agree, especially with Apple TV Plus. I, I, I mean, if you have an Apple TV, I'm pretty sure you get Apple TV Plus for free, but I mean, for people who don't like, uh, like I, I and I, I can't don't remember. Use Apple products. Yeah, yeah. I think I think I, it might be a, 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 just an Apple product thing. But for people who don't like their phones to be broken, like me, uh, uh, don't have Apple products, and so uh, <laughs> you know, uh, so I don't get Apple TV Plus for free. So I'm probably and there's not really too much on there that I think I'll really enjoy. So I'm probably going to skip out on that. Yeah. So hopefully whenever it comes out on DVD or straight to video, I will definitely be checking that out because I am super intrigued uh, by that movie. John, uh, any, any final words? Um, I also don't use any Apple products. <laughs> I can see that you are not fond of them at I all. Not, I am not an <laughs> Apple fan at all. Uh, I'm not, but um, it's, they have good cameras. I, 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 I like am. being able to drop my phone and not, and not have, to, <laughs> have to go, whoop, it's broken. So, and it's like a thousand dollar phone. With that being said, we're going to wrap things up here on the film reel. Thank you guys so much for watching. And the news here on News Channel 15 is up next. Stay tuned.